giving a user options on how they can reach out to you is helpful in terms of conversions. Now, making it easier for the user to convert is a bonus. So we were happy when we saw LinkedIn announce that you can now send users to your Calendly page from a LinkedIn lead form. So in this video, we will show you how to set this up. I will walk through a full lead form setup within LinkedIn's campaign manager, and then I'll show you how you can attach that form to your ads to start driving more calendar invites and not necessarily downloads or contact us forms. First, we're gonna start off in Calendly, and I'm gonna make this brief. This is not going to be a sales pitch. Michelle and I don't partner with Calendly. We don't have affiliates for Calendly. We just use the product ourselves. And you have to sign up for it first in order to start using this for LinkedIn lead forms. And in case you were wondering, yes, as I click on pricing, there is a free option. So in order to start getting users to book meeting time on your calendar directly from a lead form, you can sign up for this for free. It's just the free version allows just one calendar. If you have a team, maybe you wanna have it possible to schedule time with multiple members of your sales team, then you're gonna to have to pay for larger plans. So get started or make sure you have an account already set up, finalize and confirm your profile, and then you can start using this with LinkedIn ads. Okay, now going into LinkedIn ads campaign manager, we wanna start creating our new lead form. So when I open up assets, there's lead generation forms, and then we'll go all the way to the other side and create a new form. I don't really have anything I want to sell, so I'm just gonna make up stuff in the fields here. Form name is mandatory, add in your headline, add in some additional details, not required, but definitely recommended. Next, scrolling down to lead details, these are going to be the fields of the first party information that you would wanna collect from the users. Most of this stuff is gonna be just auto-filled from whatever the user has put in within their LinkedIn profile, but you do have the option to still ask custom questions. So I'm not gonna go over every single option here. You can go in, review the options, include the fields that you would want, add in any hidden fields if you need stuff imported into your CRM, include your privacy policy URL. Yes, that is mandatory. If you're wondering where this appears, there's the link right there so a user will be able to see it. Add in any disclosures, but next you will want to include a confirmation message. This is mandatory. You wanna set the proper expectations. So when someone gives you their information to book a time to have a call with you, what can they expect? What are the next steps? So let me just paste something in here, something like that. Let me just scroll up in the preview a little bit more so we can see the whole thing. But then once you have your confirmation message down, where are you gonna send users? Right now, the default option will be to a landing page. But in this case, we don't want to send them to our website. We just want them to book an appointment. We just want them to schedule time in Calendly right away. And we see this is a new option. Now, one thing that we can see within this new preview is our confirmation message is still there within this new confirmation interface. So I'm going to go back to Calendly. You see, once we logged in, we are in event types. There is our Calendly URL. Certain things blurred out. Just going to copy it. Go back to LinkedIn and paste it here. So let's look at the preview. By this point, we've already collected their information. Okay, so we have the first party data, still a win. After they've submitted the information, they can click on the book now button, which will go to the Calendly URL, choose their time and schedule it on your calendar. But notice there is an option to say no thanks. So just because they submitted the form doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to have someone schedule a meeting on their calendar. You'll still have their information because they still filled out the form, but that user can decline the meeting. So then your team will have to go out and reach out to that user. So there is not an option if they decline to go and visit your website or possibly learn more somewhere else. A possible downside, but odds are they filled out the form because they do want to meet with you. We'll look at an ad preview later on, but there's nothing else left. So I can just go and agree and create the form and it's ready to go. Why is it inactive? Because we don't have it attached to any specific ad in a campaign yet. So let's create a campaign. Go to advertise. I don't care, just gonna pick one. Create a new campaign. And since we created a lead form, of course we need lead generation. No other option. Scrolling down, click next. I always choose classic. I'm gonna click next again. And next again, unless you need to put it in a different campaign group. I'm not going to go through everything within a LinkedIn campaign. We have other videos for it. You can check out our entire LinkedIn ads playlist in the link above. Find certain things about objectives, targeting options, ad formats, even previous videos about lead forms. That's going to be your best bet. I just want to finish this campaign, but I need some sort of targeting in order to save this. So I'm going to scroll down, just choose an audience. 
Okay, I just picked a saved audience that we already have and used in previous videos just to get something in here. Keep scrolling. Next, you wanna choose your ad format. So lead forms can exist in more than one ad format. You don't have to use just single images. We can use lead forms in carousel ads, in video ads, in document ads. So depending on what creative you have, choose the proper ad format. Just remember, if you wanna test out a variety of different ad formats, each ad format will need its own campaign. Don't have to worry about placements because we're using lead forms, so the placements are limited to just LinkedIn. Choose your budget, ad schedule, your bid strategy. I'm always going to choose manual. Drop it low until I reach the threshold and this warning goes away. Choose additional conversion tracking. Remember, we're going to try to optimize for leads first, but if you want to see if people go to your website and still perform other actions, you can add them here. I'm going to click next, save this objective, and now we can start creating our ads. So while it's optional, of course, we want to name our ad. Choose the form but let's go on into our actual ad copy. So there's our introductory text. Remember with lead forms, if you don't include a destination URL, you don't get a headline. So what are your options? Your option is to leave it off. You won't get a headline, so you'd have to include your main message here or within your ad creative. I believe I stuck with single image when I was building the campaign. And then they would just see the lead form, call to action button, fill out the form, and try to book a Calendly meeting there. Or maybe you wanna consider putting in your Calendly link but one thing to keep in mind is that this destination URL does not appear within the ad. The destination URL only shows up if your ad is shared and people are seeing organically because lead forms don't show up in organic posts. So because of that, this destination URL can be beneficial and almost a necessity if people do share your ad content a lot. Because if you don't include a URL, it's getting organic impressions. There's no call to action. There's not going to be a form. There's not going to be a destination URL. So maybe you'd put your link in here. But then look at your call to action. These are our options. Sign up works, possibly learn more, maybe register or join. Depends on what type of messaging you're putting here. I'll just do sign up for now. But I guess I do need an image, which I forgot to include. Not saying it's a great one, but it's something there so we can save it. And then we'll save the ad. Here's one example. Go ahead, duplicate it, test out different images, test out different ad copy. So you can see which one resonates more with users. Hopefully it will help you increase your leads. And as always, if you click on the menu button, you can view the ad. See, there is no headline because I didn't put in a URL. URL will not show up anyway. Here is our call to action. Time to speak, we'll submit, and then a user will have the option to book an appointment. It pulls in the Calendly option. And if I go back up to Calendly quick, we just have this one option. Okay, so people can create different event types and depending on what type of event you want to create, there's going to be many more options if you have a paid account versus the free one like we do. We only have the free one. Here they open it. They can click on a day, choose a time when we're free, enter in all the details and submit. So you can walk through all of that process within the ad view, but I'm clicking next. Things look good. Finish the campaign setup so we can launch. Launch the classic campaign only. Don't need to do an A-B test. And we're all set. Now remember, this is a lead gen campaign. So I have a custom column view that really focuses on leads, cost per leads, form opens, all of that stuff. You will track the lead form submissions in the main LinkedIn view. Now you may go and Google LinkedIn integration with Calendly, and that does exist. That's mainly for messaging. Right now, we don't have columns that will show you how many book nows or calendar meeting schedules happen from the ads. We will just get the lead information, but it's not going to be that hard to connect those two together because they'll fill out the form, you'll get their information, and then they'll kind of have to fill out their information again to actually book the call. But that's pretty much it. If you're already using Calendly and you want to get more meetings on your calendar, consider running a LinkedIn lead form campaign and sending users to your Calendly page. If you have any more questions on how to set up Calendly and use it more with LinkedIn, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.